Hi, I'm Ilan Samish, founder and CEO of Amai Proteins. We have in our pipeline proteins for the meat, the milk, and the plant industry. Our first protein is the world's sweetest protein. Sugar is the main cause of the metabolic syndrome and its many manifestations such as obesity, diabetes, and so much more. Here is in blue a structure of a sweet protein found in nature in attempt to combine these two subunits, which is not so good, floppy, and our solution to this small loop in um, red, making a protein which is 50 degrees sweeter than the, uh, more stable than the one found in uh, nature in 10 degrees just by this design element. Here are some of our um, collaborators with whom we have joint development agreements, many, many applications which we did. And if you taste our ketchup with 70% less sugar, you will not distinguish that it is not a full sugar as is with other products. Happy New Year's everyone. 2024, I think personally, is gonna be such an incredible year for new products in food tech. In this video, I want to look at sweet proteins. We've done a couple taste tests of sweet proteins with Ubli, and there's another company based out of Israel, Amai, who make sweet proteins as well. Looks like they have partnerships with some massive food companies, Pepsi, Ocean Spray, Mars Company, just to name a few. We'll see when we start getting these products on the market. Between Ubli, shout out to Alan Perlstein, CEO of California Cultured, who actually started the original company that is now Ubli, and Amai, and I'm sure there's probably others that I don't know about yet. We start to see a world where in a number of years, with more of these partnerships, B2B, with large food companies, we're going to start to see our sodas have sweet proteins, our ketchups, our yogurts. Really, if you look at the food industry today, the amount of sugar in food is absolutely ridiculous. How much of it will be replaced with sweet protein? So for me personally, this isn't gonna have a big impact because I already don't buy most of these products. I like the saltiness, spiciness, bitterness to be in my savory foods. I don't like sweet savory foods like a lot of people seem to like, or at least that the industry likes to sell us. What I like about this is that at least this takes away the health impact of sugar for most people who do actually purchase these products. Um, just as one look, Hop Tea is a company out of Boulder, Colorado. They take hops that you'd use to make beer and combine that with tea. And so they essentially have like a beer like tea. Incredible products, urge you to try them. They sometimes do some limited edition sodas. Here's their cola. And as you can see, zero grams of sugar. No stevias, no other alternative sugars. Seems like a lot of people either like sugar or the industry has this idea that they need to keep selling products with sugar, maybe to keep people buying their products because they can keep them addicted. I don't know, but at least now moving forward, we'll have products with sweet proteins instead of sugar. So they should be healthier for you. We all love sugar. Whether we have a sweet tooth or not is not a question. Sugar activates the pleasure centers in our brain. And yet, sugar overconsumption underlies a metabolic syndrome, promoting obesity, diabetes, fatty liver disease, cancers. On the other hand, sugar is one of the least sustainable crops. It uses a lot of water, a lot of pesticides, transportation of 180 million tons of sugar, huge carbon footprint. We need to solve it. We need to make something which is much, much better. We are inspired by nature in two different directions. On one hand, along the equatorial belt, there are hypersweet proteins. Monellin is a hypersweet protein which in nature is around 2,000 times sweeter than sugar. But monelin in 45 degrees, it denatures. Just like boiling an egg, it loses functionality. From the other side, we're inspired by life in extreme places, extremophiles. 
There is life in crazy places. There is life in the Dead Sea, in hot springs, deep in the ocean, in acidic swamps. In all of these places there is life, and where there is life there are proteins. And the question is, how do you bridge the gap between the amazing functionalities found in nature and the harsh environment, the protein hell of the mass food market? A protein is a necklace of pearls, and we can change, mix and match the sequence of the protein it is still the same pearls. We just have a new arrangement of them. So what we do is we build a new protein that on one hand is inspired by life in extreme conditions and on the other hand is inspired by monelin. We do that by AICPD, Computational Protein Design, the ProCube platform. So before this loop was longer, and less rigid, and we made it shorter and more rigid, which makes the whole protein more stable. Then we grow the protein, we biomanufacture it using yeast, just like you do in a brewery. We harvest the protein to get 100% pure protein. And last, our protease food technology incorporates the protein to replace up to 70% of the sugar without compromising taste. People's palates vary because uh, it depends on how many taste buds each person has on their tongue. Uh, people who have a lot of taste buds are probably super tasters. And it is genetics. My name is Inbar Zucker. I'm the head of sensory evaluation and the food technologist at Amai Proteins. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we have uh, six sessions. This is the first tray, and then you have another tray. Around 5% of the population are super tasters. They are very important to Amai because there's no substitute to the human tongue. We screened a lot of people, and we take only those who have very high sensory sensitivity. <laughs> The role is to do objective measurements like measuring the sweetness intensity and the sensory profile of the products that we develop. Swilling is 100% protein. At the end, we have a powder which is very potent, 3,000 times sweeter than sugar. So one kilogram of our powder replaces 3,000 kilograms of sugar. We need to understand old school agriculture cannot sustain any longer. The future is now. We need to produce new materials. This is what we're doing with Swilling, producing it with yeast in a brewery which we can set anywhere in the world to make the new generation of sweeteners. Thanks again for watching. Excited to explore more what's coming in the pipeline for food tech. We'll catch you in the next video.